Heather, this is Ayush and today we will deeply understand double row angular contact pairing and four contact angular contact pairing. Yes, these are also angular contact bearing. If you are new on this channel, I had also covered single row angular contact bearing in too much detail. So later on you can check out the complete series on the bearing. So let's start from double row angular contact bearing. Double row angular contact bearing is an intricately designed bearing with two rows a ball in back to back arrangement. So it's like a pair of two single row angular contact bearing in back to back arrangement. Means this single bearing can take axial load in both direction as well as radial load. And this is the main advantage of double row angular contact bearing as compared to single row angular contact bearing. A single row angular contact bearing can take the axial load only in one direction. But it would be more fair if we compare the double row angular contact bearing with pair of single row angular contact bearing in back to back arrangement. So the first advantage of double row angular contact bearing is the simple installation. It's an integrated design. There is no need of preloading or any kind of adjustment. As we have seen in single row angular contact bearing, the preloading was mandatory and preloading is a complex process. So this bearing is ready to use. Second, this bearing takes less space as compared to pairs of single row angular contact bearing. So we can use it where space is limited. Third, this bearing can take higher axial load as compared to pairs of single row angular contact bearing. So should we always use double row angular contact bearing instead of single row angular contact bearing? So answer is no. Because number one, limitation of preload adjustment. We cannot preload double row angular contact bearing as per the application desire like we do in single row angular contact bearings where we get much flexibility in preloading adjustment. But as we know in many applications preloading is required to get the desired degree of positional accuracy and stiffness. So we cannot use these bearing out there. Number two, double row angular contact bearing is not economical bearing. The cost is higher as compared to single row angular contact bearing. Number third, double row angular contact bearing cannot meet face to face arrangement. It is not possible to manufacture. So the application where face to face arrangement is required, we cannot use double row angular contact bearing. I hope now it's pretty much clear. So now let's move to four contact angular contact bearing. Four contact angular contact bearing. So in four contact angular contact bearing, there is a single row of balls and bearing inner rays and outer rays are designed in a such a way that ball can make poor contact, poor point contact and support axial as well as radial load. And this bearing seems like deep groove ball bearing. But in deep groove ball bearing, ball can make two point contact at a time in normal condition, in normal running condition. But in this bearing, inner rays are splitted. Yes, the inner rays are splitted in this bearing. It's completely splitted. And this is why the four point of contact are possible. But here is a catch. For the proper function, ball should contact only one inner ring and the outer ring raceway. And this case is possible when load ratio of axial load and radial load is greater than 1.27. Means we cannot use this bearing in application where axial load is not present. We cannot use for only radial load. And if the axial load is present, it should be at least 1.27 time of radial load. So what we do? We generally use this bearing as a thrust bearing. Or we use it in combination with radial bearings. But this bearing do not require preloading adjustment just cap the ring and this was all about all types of angular contact bearing but as much we have seen and understand was like a theoretical knowledge so for better practical understanding we will design a high speed bearing block and we will use pairs of angular contact bearing and we will do it from completely scratch but before that first we will understand bearing life like what is the bearing dynamic load capacity 
and what is the equivalent load capacity and how to calculate this term. And now what about taper roller bearing? So it's pretty much same like angular contact ball bearing. And we also use taper roller bearing for combined load in axial direction as well as radial direction. Since in taper roller bearing we use taper instead of ball as a rolling element and because the rollers are at angle to take the combined load that's why we call it taper roller bearing. So the load carrying capacity of taper roller bearing are much higher than the angular contact ball bearing. And all those things like face to face arrangement or back to back arrangement or the process of preloading and adjustment are quite same in case of taper roller bearing also. Same like angular contact bearings. But I don't have much experience in taper roller bearing so I don't want to go in detail. Maybe in future we will also cover taper roller bearing in too much detail. And now as I was asking from starting that what kind of bearings we use in car wheels. So now let me answer this and the answer is not simple. Because in automobiles there are generations of bearing. For example, for example cars like Maruti Suzuki Wagoner, the integrated double row ball bearings are used. And in SUV or heavy vehicle taper roller bearing are used. Also in tractor taper roller bearing are used because taper roller bearing can take heavy combined load. But in latest generation cars they used axial preloaded hybrid angular contact bearing and it's a complete integrated hub and these hub are quite expensive. Moreover, car manufacturer optimize the bearing design as per the car performance and the cost. And they do not use commercial bearings that we use in daily life. But the function and design are more or less same. So as far we have understand all types of radial bearing, all types of thrust bearing and all types of angular contact bearing. Now next is self-alignment bearing. So in the next part first we will understand the misalignment, the type of misalignment in case of bearing. And what are the bearings out there for different type of misalignment. So the next part should be on your screen or you can check the description. And thank you so much for the watching.